We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you all. Amen. We do gather in this Easter season to acknowledge our discipleship and our willingness to do what Jesus says. He commissions us to go and proclaim the gospel. And the world we live in, for one reason or other, has become somewhat apathetic to the gospel message of Jesus, but it's still meaningful. It still has the message of hope, the message of a purpose in life. And so we pray that we too may continue to be good evangelizers like the early disciples. Lord Jesus, you are risen. You have revealed yourself to your disciples. You breathe your spirit of peace upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord. And Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. You overcome division caused by sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are risen. And you call us to give witness to your life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Join them. But the people were loud in their praise, 
and the numbers of men and women who came to believe in the Lord increased steadily. So many signs and wonders were worked among the people at the hands of the apostles that the sick were even taken out into the streets and laid on beds and sleeping mats in the hope that at least the shadow of Peter might fall across some of them as he went past. <coughs> People even came crowding in from the towns round about Jerusalem, bringing with them their sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and all of them were cured. The word of the Lord. In the evening 
day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. And showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. It's not always easy to believe. I think most people have doubts at some time. Then there are some people who spend a lot of energy attacking Christianity and belief in God. Well, even though we are people of faith, I think most of us would like some empirical proof. We'd like to know for certain that heaven is true, that God exists, and even a small sign would be appreciated. Less well, on a bad day. On a good day, we believe. Well, Thomas, in one way, was lucky. He had his doubts answered in a very real way. He was able to encounter the risen Lord, as did the other disciples in that room. And I think, once again, we can be somewhat envious of Thomas. Faith can be a struggle at times. In these times, Thomas can be an encouragement. And Jesus' words to Thomas are our encouragement. You believe because you have seen me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. One reason Thomas struggled with belief in the resurrection of his friend Jesus was that he was absent from the room when Jesus appeared. We could ask the question, why did Jesus 
choose this moment to appear to the other disciples? Why didn't he wait? So that Thomas would have returned. But the situation is Thomas was absent. And so Jesus is using that opportunity as a teaching moment. The story about Thomas reminds us of the importance of the faith community. When Thomas was absent, he found it difficult to believe. However, when he was present with the faith community, the other disciples, his road to faith was enhanced. To grow in faith, we need the support of the faith community. Sometimes people do, however, experience personal loss, or they may experience some hurt from the church or from some Christians, and they drift away from the church. And sometimes people are just apathetic. They just drift away for no reason at all. But removing ourselves from the faith community will not help our growth in faith. And Thomas is a figure that affirms the, that, that affirms the importance of belonging. Unlike Thomas who had direct contact with the risen Lord, and was invited to reach out and touch him. Our contact is through faith, but it is no less real. The Easter season is a time to be affirmed in faith, to strengthen our sense of being disciples. The incident with Thomas is our proclamation that God reveals himself to us, and it is as church that he reveals himself and breathes his peace and spirit over us. And it is as church he commissions us to continue the mission of proclaiming the gospel and the promise of eternal life. And so Thomas becomes for us a good example. Thomas is like us. We are like Thomas, perhaps. When we are with the faith community, we are nourished not only by God's word and the spirit, we're also encouraged by one another. And this is an aspect of church, the faith community on its pilgrim journey. And so as we continue this Easter season, may we be good pilgrims on that journey, giving witness to the risen Lord among us. disciples of the risen Lord, we proclaim our faith.
announces Bishop Paul, Fathers Brian, Wynne, all priests and religious. Please give them your grace as they minister to the spiritual needs of your flock. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all Anzacs who sacrificed their lives for us and for those who suffered in the horrific events in Christchurch and Sri Lanka. May we all work towards a world free of hatred and conflict. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We ask you to help our society, to acknowledge the importance of the family unit, that we all work towards strengthening of family relationships. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Be with our school children and students as they return from the holidays. May they all travel safely and return to their studies with renewed energy and enthusiasm. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all members of our parish family suffering illness and hardship in their lives. Help us to be there for those who are housebound or incapacitated in some way. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Give eternal rest to the members of our parish family who have recently passed away, especially Teresa Rooney, Sharon King, Patricia Murphy, Daniel Morrell, Vida Ryan. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, your Son Jesus is the Prince of Peace, the light of the world. We offer our prayer in his name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, and for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. We now pray that this our offering may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together. The, un the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Right. 
the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all the saints, on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, with Paul our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
So John is a very good um, retreat um, person or reflection person. He has good, um, good insights and a good presentation. So hopefully you'd like to have a, a day of prayer, reflection. Next Saturday is a good day. And just to remind those who are the, U the Euchre players, on a Tuesday, that will be cancelled this week because of Teresa Rudy's funeral. And, and Teresa was our oldest parishioner. She just had her 99th birthday a week ago, or two weeks ago. But um, just died um, yesterday morning, was it? Friday night, Friday night. Let's stand for our prayer of thanksgiving. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Easter sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And the Lord's blessings be with you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we go like the disciples commissioned by the Lord to love, to serve, and to proclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.